Hope everyone's having a pleasant morning. It's a beautiful negative one degree day here in Southeast Michigan, specifically Ann Arbor, home of the 1997 world champion Wolverines football team, Tom Brady's freshman year, and also the 2023 Wolverines world champion football team. Uh, we drove in two nights ago on Monday night uh, in our 2020 Tesla Model S Long Range Plus, um, and to our astonishment, in temperatures that started in the 20s and then dropped down into the teens and then dropped down into the single digits as we uh, as we made our drive from Pennsylvania to Southeast Michigan, uh, this car did fantastic, and it lost very very little range in extreme cold weather. And some people out west might say single digit temps are not extreme cold weather. Okay, I got it, but. In any case, it's uh, it's good and cold here. Uh, this morning when we uh, got in the car, it was negative one outside. The car said it was two degrees. So, you know, plus or minus, it's somewhere hovering around zero degrees. Um, and as long as you keep your EV plugged in overnight, at least to a 120, if not a 240 volt AC power source, uh, you will have no issues with this car, with operating this car in extreme cold weather. Keep in mind, people in Norway own tons of these things. Um, people in Germany, people in all kinds of cold weather climates drive Teslas and have no problems. But the number one thing is that you have to keep it plugged in at night. Um, because if you don't, then the car is going to lose a ton of range and it's gonna expend a ton of energy on keeping the battery warm. And so we're gonna do a little comparison here, okay, between a Tesla and between a Super Duty. This is our 2023 F350 with the standard output 6.7 power stroke, which has been sitting outside for about 10 days now in this weather. We stopped in last night and put some diesel 911 in the fuel tank. Um, in the unlikely circumstance that the fuel had gelled up in the fuel tank. And so we're gonna see if this sucker will turn over in negative one degree weather after sitting for a week. Look at that. Look at that. A Super Duty with the 6.7 power stroke, standard output, 2023. That's been sitting out again for about a week in temperatures that are somewhere around one degree, zero degrees. It was well below zero this past weekend. Has no trouble starting and running. Okay, unlike unlike our 2011 Duramax, which was dead for a good portion of the uh, the weekend, that right there is what you need: diesel 911. Yeah, our Duramax was dead for uh, for much or most of the weekend. Um, we had an employee who had brought it home and could not start it on Saturday. And ended up having to, uh, to get some diesel 911. Apparently the fuel had gelled up, we think, and put it in there. And it still took an entire day for the fuel to reliquify. And uh, and eventually she got started on Sunday and then by Monday, yesterday, was able to drive it into work without any trouble, without much trouble. 
And so, despite everything you've seen in the news, despite what you saw in Waters last night, um, where he said, or somebody said, they had an army of, of dead robots stranded at Tesla charging stations. In Chicago, specifically. Um, if you take care of your vehicles, they will take care of you. Um, now, specifically as relates to EVs, um, the fact is that these things are not like a, uh, a flashlight or not like some other battery-powered appliance where you can just turn it off and forget about it. And then... Uh, and then leave it sitting for days and weeks. And when you're ready to use it, turn it on and it'll run great. That's not the case. That is absolutely not the case. An EV is constantly consuming power. And uh, uh, especially when it's cold out, uh, the battery needs to stay warm. Um, and if you don't keep the battery warm, uh, you're gonna have a problem. And, uh, and again, especially in cold weather, uh, if you keep it plugged in, at least to a 120, if not a 240, you will have no trouble with your car in the morning and you'll get all the range you need and you'll be able to go wherever you need to go because of the fact that the battery stayed warm overnight and hopefully the battery actually picked up some range. Uh, with a 120, uh, you're barely gonna get any range out of it. Uh, maybe, maybe two miles of extra range for every hour you have it plugged in. Uh, with a 240, you're gonna get 20 plus miles of range for every hour that you have it plugged in. So each morning you're gonna wake up to a car that is fully charged, the battery's warm, it's ready to go. You can actually set it on the Tesla app for when you wanna leave in the morning. And uh, we set it for 7.30 this morning. And when we got out to the car, the interior was warmed up, the steering wheel was warm, the seat was warm. Um, it was ready to go. We didn't have to sit there for like 15 minutes waiting for it to warm up and, you know, de-icing, you know, scraping the windshield, none of that stuff. It was ready to go. And so that's the number one rule for surviving a winter with an EV. Just keep it plugged in at night. Now, I think the problem a lot of people in Chicago had is that they, they're city dwellers. And so maybe they live in an apartment. Maybe they live in like a brownstone or something and they didn't have an easy way to keep their car plugged in. And if you don't have a way to keep your car plugged in, uh, yeah, you're going to be in some pretty desperate circumstances. Uh, and you might want to rethink whether or not you should even have an EV living in the city. If you can't, like, keep it plugged in at work, for instance. If you can plug it in at work, um, and maybe your work even offers free charging, then you're good to go because you're never paying for fuel. Um, and it's a great proposition. But if you have to plug in, uh, if you don't have that option, and maybe you go an entire weekend without plugging in your car, even if you do get to plug it in at work, if it's like a long weekend, if it's a three day weekend, and your car just sits on the street in some parking space parallel parked in the city, uh, yeah, it's gonna be losing range all weekend, and don't be surprised by Monday morning if all of a sudden that battery is dead or close to it. So uh, owning an EV as a city dweller is an extremely, uh, iffy proposition. We wouldn't do it. Some people might. We won't. We never would. Um, the second thing is that uh, you do lose some range when you're driving. Um, and case in point, we drove out to Michigan uh, two nights ago from Pennsylvania, eastern Pennsylvania on uh, Interstate 80, basically the entire way. And the temp was in the 20s when we left. And then it got down into the teens and then it was single digits by the time we crossed over from Pennsylvania into Ohio, and it was maybe five or six degrees by the time we crossed over from Ohio into Michigan around midnight two nights ago. And our observation was that our consumption, our power consumption, which in this car, the 2020 Model S Long Range Plus, is usual, usually around 275, 280, 290 uh, watt hours per mile. Um, 
miles or just under four miles per kilowatt hour uh, in temperate weather. That's the consumption in normal weather. Uh, the power consumption in uh, when we started that drive two nights ago dropped down to around, or increased I should say, to around 325 watt hours per mile. So, or otherwise known as about three miles per kilowatt hour. It's just, it's just two different ways of saying the same thing. Um, when it was in the 20s for about the first 150 miles or so of the drive during that first leg, and then uh, as the temps started falling or continued to fall, the consumption went up from about 325 to maybe 350 watt hours per mile. So just under three miles per kilowatt hour. And then as the temperature continued to fall, the consumption, it just kind of kept creeping up to 360, 370. And by the time we got to Michigan, again, going the speeds that you see here, mid 70s, the consumption was around 380 or 390, okay? Or almost 400 watt hours per mile. And otherwise known as about two and a half miles per kilowatt hour. So we lost probably, I'm gonna say about 35% of our range, give or take. Um, again, going, going 75 miles an hour into the wind because the winds are generally bl blowing from west to east. Um, to me, that's not bad. Um, about a 25%, 35% increase in consumption. Um, it's not a deal breaker at all. It's not doubling your consumption. Um, your range doesn't get cut in half, all right? Um, you just need to plan your charging stops accordingly. And this car charged just fine in cold weather, in extreme cold weather. We were stopped for no more than 15, 20 minutes and then back on the road. And uh, and this is an older car, this is a 2020, and it does not have the newer heater, which is called a heat pump heater. It has something called a resistive heater, and that consumes a lot more energy. That's basically the same technology as your um, 1920s era space heater that you use at home. It's just an electric heating element that you blow hot air across, or that you blow cold air across, and it heats it up. Um, now, the newer ones, the newer Teslas, have something called a heat pump, which is like one of those high efficiency home uh, uh, heat pumps that is air conditioning in the summer, and it pulls heat from your house out of your house during the summer, and then it reverses the flow of uh, coolant or refrigerant, and it pumps heat from outside your house into it during the winter. Um, and so the newer Teslas have a much more efficient heater than this one does, and yet we had no complaints at all about the loss of range, loss of efficiency, and the uh, increase in power consumption during the drive the other night. And so as far as road trips go, this is a great, great road trip car. This is an astoundingly good road trip car. Um, just keep in mind, if you don't wanna wind up like one of those Chicago residents, one of those city dwellers who was backed up for hours waiting to charge their car at a uh, Tesla charging station, uh, keep it plugged in at night. And then when you're on a road trip, don't run the battery all the way down to almost zero, to almost empty. Um, and then arrive at a charging station, which might happen to be crowded uh, with no range left and no safety factor left. It's just like in a gas engine car when you're on a road trip. Don't wait until the, the, uh, the light comes on telling you you're about to run out of gas. For God's sakes, stop and get more gas when you got about a quarter tank, and you won't have trouble. And it's just like in this thing: stop and recharge when you're at about 25%, um, and plan your charging stops accordingly. And tell the car that you're planning to stop and charge. Put it in as like the destination, so it'll warm up the battery and get ready to charge faster once you arrive. And so, essentially, what I'm saying is that if you have common sense and you apply it to the situation. Um, you will not have trouble in the winter, either just surviving in the first place with an EV or uh, or taking a road trip with it. Just not an issue either way. And so as you saw with our diesel powered F-350, 
uh, which we just started in zero degree weather and which had no trouble cranking up after sitting outside for a week in weather that was sub-zero in some conditions, in some cases. Just treat the fuel and your diesel pickup will be fine. And, uh, and apply some common sense and take certain precautions and uh, what you might call best practices with your EV and you'll be fine. Again, we've had no issues with this car in extreme cold weather. And if you're interested, right now, this morning, our consumption is 450 watt hours per mile since we uh, left the parking lot there a few minutes ago. And falling at speeds that are in the mid to upper 70s. And so what else is there to say? Not much. Um, hope you all are having a great day. Uh, we're having a, uh, what's there to say? We're having an okay time out here in Michigan. Um, the Tesla's running great. Our diesel powered uh, Super Duty is running great as you just saw. Uh, one or two of our other diesel powered vehicles have had some trouble, specifically our 2011 66 Duramax LML series um, because the fuel was not treated. And uh, and I guess that's all for now. Hope you all hope you all have a great day, and we'll talk to you later.